who is this savior, this agile hero of a man? It almost reminds me of someone, but who? So, um, so Godless Cranium asked the question is what, what can Christianity do, what can it offer that secular means can't, um, or can't do at least as well. Holy crap! This is the first person who basically got my question correct, and he's an atheist. Thank you for that, Rob. I was starting to think I had spoken in an unintelligible tongue or something. Let's hear what you got. And I'm going to help them out because there's one thing I think religion can possibly do. Oh, oh, let me guess. Indoctrinate children with nonsense they don't even understand. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words uh, in this adulterous and sinful generation of him also shall the son of man be ashamed. Oh, there you go. Wait a minute, wait just a minute, wait just a minute, please. People want to know what that means that you just said. In your own word, tell us what does that mean. It means just what it says. No, wait, that can't be it. I got it. Convince a whole room of people to sit quietly while their pastor tells them a tale about how he assaulted a child for Jesus. There was a young man in, in Calvary. Uh, his name was Ben. And I was running a youth group. I was there for a few years. And um, he was just, he was a nice kid, but he was one of those kids that was always just, he's a real smart aleck. He was, just, was, was a bright kid, which didn't help things, right? Made him more dangerous. And we were outside one day, youth group, and uh, he was just, just trying to push my buttons. And he was just, you know, kind of not taking the Lord serious. And I walked over to him, and I went, bam! I punched him in the chest as hard as I, I crumpled the kid. I just crumpled him. And I said, I leaned over and I said, Ben, when are you going to stop playing games with God? I led that man to the Lord right there. There's times that that might be needed. No, no, no. That can't be it. I nearly forgot that I asked for a beneficial aspect of religion that can't be replaced by secular means. I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry, Rob. Carry on. Um, <clears throat> that is of real practical use. It's a bit of an odd one. But it's dealing with psychopaths. And I mean that scientifically. I mean people who have no innate moral compass. They don't have empathy generally. So they, um, they don't feel this um, sort of thing holding them back. Stopping them from doing other things because of how they affect other people. Um, I've, I find this very interesting. I've thought about it a lot and... I do and have as well, Rob. Thanks for bringing it up. Before I address this point, I just want to preface it by saying I'm not qualified to diagnose anyone for anything, and what is to follow is my opinion only. Although I will try to back it up with evidence, as always, and all links will be available in the description box below. So I think Rob brings up a very good point, and one I've been mulling over for a while, especially after I had seen a David Wood video that outlined how he went from being an atheist to a Christian. Here's a few highlights so watchers know what I'm talking about but I definitely recommend you watch it for yourself if you're at all intrigued by this subject. When I was five years old, I had a dog named Goliath. One day, my mother received a phone call. She turned to me with tears in her eyes and informed me that Goliath had been run over by a bus. I looked at her and thought to myself, so what, it's just a dog. But my mother was sad and I couldn't figure out why. Anyone can blow up a bunch of random people, you don't know them. If you're sick of life dangling at the end of society's puppet strings, the killing has to start much closer to home. My dad was the only relative I had within a few hundred miles, so he obviously needed to die, and I had a ball-peen hammer that would do the trick. After a while, my senses returned to me, and I walked into my dad's bedroom at about 2 o'clock in the morning, Thanksgiving Day. I stood over him with the hammer, and I tried to think of one wrong thing he'd ever done to me. Nothing came to mind. So I drew back my arm and came down on him with all 
230 pounds. I didn't know how fast blood could come out of someone's head. Kept hitting him until I was sure he was dead. Then I walked outside and drove away. There was no rush of freedom this time. I didn't feel anything anymore. God created the universe, but we're something special. We're created in God's image. But we reject God, and in rejecting God, we strive to twist and warp His image, which we bear. For years, I was willing to sacrifice everything for a kind of freedom, just a freedom from external control. It's a false freedom, because we just end up using it to degrade and destroy ourselves, tarnishing the image of God so that we won't be reminded of what we are and what responsibilities we share. So it turns out that David's father survived the attack, although he suffered brain damage, and David was sentenced to 10 years in jail for malicious wounding. While in jail, he met a man named Randy, who was a devout Christian. They used to debate, and David began to read the Bible so that he could refute Randy's arguments. However, this led to David becoming a Christian. David has been diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder, or sociopathy. Could you make an argument that David embracing Christianity keeps him from backsliding into a murderous rage? Yeah, I think it's very possible. I'm not entirely sure whether there is a secular or non-religious method that would achieve the same thing for every person with antisocial personality disorder, like David Woods. There are of course treatment methods that don't rely on religion, such as psychotherapy, which focuses on helping people with antisocial personality disorder understand other people's emotions. There is no medication specifically designed to treat the disorder, but from what I have read, other symptoms often accompany the disorder, such as depression or anxiety, that can't be treated with medication. I've also read that sociopathy might not be a disorder at all, and it may instead represent a natural variant in human personality. Many sociopaths aren't criminals, don't try to bash their father's head in with a ball peen hammer, and live largely productive lives. In fact, many sociopaths have leadership positions because they're often confident and charismatic, which are qualities that can often help people attain a leadership position. So do I concede the point? Not so fast, because there is a flip side to this, and I want to explore it now. You'd think that if religion acted as a significant deterrent for murder rates, that religious countries like America would have far less homicides than less religious countries, such as Hong Kong. However, the exact opposite is true. For example, America had a per capita homicide rate of 42 per 100,000 in 2011, and Hong Kong had a 2.4 per 100,000. The Netherlands is next on our list of least religious countries, and it had a homicide rate of 10.83 per 100,000. Now, I'm not arguing that America has a higher homicide rate because of religion, but only that religion doesn't seem to guarantee that the murder rate will be lower. According to the statistics I was able to find, sociopaths make up anywhere from 1-5% to of the population, which sounds like a rather small amount, but even if we go with a modest 2% of the population, that would mean approximately 6,400,000 sociopaths reside in the United States alone. Hong Kong has a population of 7,400,000, which means that there are approximately 148,000 sociopaths walking their streets, yet their per capita homicide rate is shockingly smaller than America's. So while I think religion might, maybe, possibly help some people like David Woods? I think that number would be much smaller than you might suspect. I really think that David might be the exception and not the rule. And considering how much damage religion does around the world, I really don't think it's worth keeping around for what is likely to be a very small number of sociopaths it might help. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. Anyhow, that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please hit me up with a thumbs up, and I also hope more of you start to follow me on Twitter. I am fairly active on that platform, and I often release hints about my upcoming projects there. So if you want to stay informed about what I'm doing on this channel, Twitter is a good place to start. I'm also still working on my Discord server, and I'll hopefully have that ready soon. I still have some bugs to iron out. Let me know what you thought about this video below. Thanks for watching, take care, and cheers.